That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. All right, and today's Daily Dose of Stupid. This is a good one, and it relates to what we were just talking to with impeachment. So Al Green, the representative of Texas, there's, and this is especially true in the House. I think it's true in the Senate too, but it's especially true in the House. There are Democrats that, though I disagree with them, even if I think that their intentions are bad, I think that they are intelligent people that even if I think that they're irrational or unreasonable, they are not dumb people. Nancy Pelosi, for example, even though I vehemently disagree with her, I think she actually is a pretty good politician, and I think she actually is pretty intelligent. I cannot say the same for everybody <laughs> in the Democrat House. Al Green is one of those people. I think that uh, other than maybe Frank Johnson and AOC, Al Green may be the dumbest man <laughs> in the House of Representatives in this clip. It's a, it's a few weeks old, but it shows you why. So this is uh, Al Green appearing on MSNBC with Chris Hayes. Democrats during this entire uh, affair, particularly since September when the formal impeachment inquiry started. And you, you play a starring role in those charges. I mean, the argument goes like this of, ha of House Republicans and Trump and his allies, the president and his allies, is basically the Democrats wanted to impeach Donald Trump from day one. They cast about looking for a set of facts that they could plausibly use to do it. And all of it was pretextual and reverse engineered to get to this point. Exhibit one, Congressman Al Green, who's been calling for the man's impeachment uh, for, for two years now. What's your response to that charge? Well, the genesis of impeachment, to be very candid with you, was um, when the, the president was running for office. <laughs> Man, you got to love Al Green. <laughs> uh, so I, I love this because th the thing is, this would be bad no matter what, no matter what the circumstances surrounding it were. This is a really dumb answer. Because it confirms everything that Republicans have been saying for two years now is that they hated this guy before he ever took office, before anything happened. They were saying we need to impeach him. That's evident with not only Al Green, but also people like Maxine Waters, who tried to impeach the guy before he had even taken the oath of office. The man wasn't even president yet, and she was trying to impeach him. And that's the argument that Chris Hayes just laid out. This whole thing was reverse engineered, that they impeachment was already a foregone conclusion. It was just trying to figure out what they were going to impeach him on. Not unlike, for example, a police officer that has decided, I'm going to arrest you. I just have to find the right crime to pin on you so that I can arrest you. I mean, that that's, you know, reeks of entrapment and it's not fair. And exactly the same thing happened with Trump. And, and Chris Hayes asked him about this and he's like, well, to be honest, it's actually far worse than that. It happened before he was even president. <laughs> and what makes this so horrible, because like I said, this is a, this is a really dumb answer regardless of, of how you, you look at it. But what makes it even worse is that he's in friendly territory. It would be one thing if Al Green were talking to your Sean Hannity's or your Laura Ingram, or a, you know, a Ben Shapiro type, or something like that, and debating them. This is Chris Hayes on MSNBC lobbing him a giant softball right down the middle over the plate, setting him up to knock it out of the park, and Al Green then proceeds to not only swing and miss, but hit himself in the head with the bat and pee his pants. <laughs> that's, a, that's the only way I can characterize this answer. Because it's just that bad he's saying, because he's saying, yeah, you know what's crazy is these, these Republicans out here, they're saying that this whole thing was reverse engineered, and you're the one that they actually try to pin that on. They say, well, he's been trying to do it since he was president. Crazy, right? What do you say to that? And then Al Green's like, well, actually, it was before that. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Maybe because Caleb is a, a media type and because he cut it off immediately after Al Green gave his answer that that was just a soundbite that I cut it to make it sound worse than it is that 
what Caleb's doing here is he's trying to cast it in the worst possible light because he doesn't like Al Green, and Al Green actually did give an explanation for why he said that or the way that he said it afterward. Nope. Nope. Actually, it gets worse if you continue to play this clip because then he gives his rationale for why before the man was ever president, he had decided we have to impeach him. We have to take this guy out. He actually makes that case when this clip continues on. Take a look. And he had members of his own party to talk about his unfitness to hold office. Uh, the persons who were running against him, Mr. Romney spoke of his not being fit to hold office. Mr. Cruz made statements about it. Uh, so the president didn't have the luxury of persons from his party uh, having been on his side, as it were, throughout this entire ordeal. Uh, Senator Graham has said some very harsh things about the president. Well, there you have it, guys. Al Green explaining why we've got to get rid of the guy, why we've got to impeach him. The reason we have to impeach him is because when he was running in the primary, the people that wanted to be president that were running against him said that he shouldn't be president. Wow. Well, if we're going by that standard, Al Green, literally every single president this country has ever had and in the entirety of its history should have been impeached. The only exception would be George Washington, who, even though he ran against John Adams, basically waltzed into the presidency and, and there was really no mudslinging or, or no back and forth between him and Adams. That would be the only exception. Every single one that happened subsequent of that had people in their own party that disagreed with them when they were running against them. That's kind of the nature of a political campaign. You go out there, you talk about why people should vote for you and should not vote for the other guy. By the way, I don't know if you missed this little detail, but one of the people that was running against Trump, which is the stipulation that Al Green himself put on it, one of the people that was running against Trump that was talking bad about him was Mitt Romney. Do you understand why that's all so stupid? Mitt Romney didn't run in 2016. Mitt Romney ran in 2012. Now, Mitt Romney has been critical of the president, but Al Green said it was the people that were running against him, and Mitt Romney wasn't doing that. Cruz was, Graham was, but Romney wasn't. And so... There's just multi-layers. It's it's like an onion of stupid. You peel back a layer of stupid, there's another even smellier, nastier <laughs> layer of stupid underneath it. You can just keep going. Oh, man, you got to love Al Green. The guy just makes my job easy. But what's funny about this, you could try to reverse engineer it. You could go back and, and flip it on its head. What would happen... If you had, and I know that this is low-hanging fruit, but let's say that Hillary Clinton wins the 2016 election, which, by the way, if that happens, you can pretty much guarantee that the consulate in Baghdad that was attacked would have been exactly the same as Benghazi because she was the Secretary of State at that point. But anyway, leaving that aside for a second, let's say that in this uh, dystopian uh, alternate history that somehow Hillary Clinton won the 2016 election and the Republicans decided to impeach her. Now, there's a number of reasons that a Republican might theoretically in this world be able to suggest that, hey, this is the reason that we were going to impeach her. And then he goes on a show and say, no, actually, we wanted to impeach her before she ever got elected. And on top of that, uh, the reason that we think she should have been elected is because Bernie said some really really unflattering things about her in the primary. Well, duh, he was running against her. <laughs> it really is amazing the links that the media will go to to try to cover for their buddies, the Democrat Party. They have become the propaganda arm for the Democrats, and what's hysterical about that is this is Al Green being lobbed a softball question by the media, who's trying to help him out. Chris Hayes is trying to make the case that the Republicans are crazy for even suggesting that the Democrats were doing this long before Trump ever took office, or at least from the day that Trump did take office. And Al Green goes, no, it actually goes back further than that. It's actually worse than the Republican argument that you're making trying to give me to smack down. 
And because Al Green's answer is so monumentally, almost numbingly stupid, remember that this is the case the Democrats are making with a media that is designed to help them, that is trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, that wants their narrative to succeed. If they're pulling stuff like this with a media that's trying to give them softballs and trying to lob up a shot so that they can make an easy layup, can you imagine how bad the impeachment case would look if they did not have a media that was willing to do that? Can you imagine how flimsy it would look? I mean, even more so than it already does. But can you imagine how foolish they would look if they didn't have their buddies in the media at CNN and MSNBC and ABC News and all the other alphabet soup networks? Can you imagine how bad it would look then? Man, you shudder to thought it. If Al Green can't even pull off a decent answer with a guy that's trying to help him with it, imagine how bad he would look if somebody was actually doing their job and questioning somebody in power like Al Green. I, I mean, it's a pipe dream, but I, I really wish, if you can't even win a baseball game with the umpires are in your pocket, if you're so bad that the guys who are supposed to be the referees, that they're actually pulling for one side over the other, and you still can't win a game that way, you suck. And there's no two ways about it. <laughs> Oh, hey, what are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.